Hello. I was very fortunate back in 1975 to receive an Australia Council grant to study antique ceramics at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. So in July of that year, I spent five weeks in New York and made daily visits to the Met to fulfil this assignment. The curator of Western Arts at that time was a delightful lady whose name was Jessie McNabb Dennis. She organised for me to view whatever I wanted to from the huge collection in the storerooms, under the watchful eye of a co-white-gloved curator. I wasn't allowed to handle anything, but I still managed to examine a huge array of many and various wonderful pieces of antiques, uh, mainly English, pottery and porcelain. In this video I will show you the earthenware and stoneware pottery that I was able to study and photograph with my 35mm slide camera, beginning with this delightful teapot. It is a moulded form in salt glazed stoneware. In the process of salt glazing, salt soaked in water is thrown into the kiln when it reaches its maximum temperature. The sodium from the salt reacts with the silica in the clay body to form a coating of sodium silicate, which is of course glass. Salt glazing was widely used during this period. The decoration is enamelled and the reserves are expertly painted in Chinese scenes. This lovely collection of teapots were also produced at various Staffordshire potteries and dated around 1765. They are finely moulded stoneware and also salt glazed, beautifully and variously enamelled in their decoration. These Staffordshire teapots and a coffee pot are once again stoneware glazed with a high gloss felspathic glaze. Each one has been expertly moulded with some of the designs imitating designs in silver. The relief decoration was carried in the moulds and not applied separately as in Wedgwood Jasper ware. Here are four pieces of Etruria Cheshire Wedgwood dry bodied stonewares from about 1765. The two pieces at the top are Jasper ware with the applied relief decoration I mentioned before. The bottom lower left jug is called black basalt. The rich black colour was achieved by burning red bodied clay in a red hot fire till it was black. On the right is a black basalt lidded pot with encaustic enamel decoration, a little bit later, early 19th century. Black basalt was developed after 1768. This kind of pottery was known as scratch blue salt glazed stoneware from the Staffordshire potteries around about the 1760s. Here we have a vase, a small bowl, a tea caddy, a larger saucer and cream jug. Uh, the decorative technique was to scratch the design into the leather hard clay. After the bisque firing, cobalt oxide was rubbed into the scratched design, the excess wiped off and then the pieces were salt glazed in the manner that I described earlier. This interesting plate is Staffordshire slipware by John Wright and is dated about 1705. It is made of red earthenware and decorated with, in this case, a white and two coloured slips. Slip is simply clay watered down to a creamy consistency which enables it to be squeezed through a small spout. The background is white slip and the decoration is brown and black slip coloured with oxides of iron and manganese. The slip is applied to the leather hard greenware 
Bisque fired and then glazed with a clear lead glaze. During my pottery career, I often produced wares using these old techniques. Here is one of my plates using this technique of trailed slipware. Here are some examples of creamware pottery with pierced openwork borders. This type of ware was produced by the Leeds pottery founded in about 1756. Some were earthenware and some were stoneware, determined by the temperature of the firing. A white Cornish clay body was used and combined with a translucent glaze produced this pale cream to ivory colour. It was popularly known as Leeds ware. The piercing was done while the clay was leather hard with a fine blade. Front left is a wine glass stand and to the right is a pickle dish. This most interesting dish is called a cauliflower dish and is press moulded in creamware and decorated with green underglaze copper oxide pigments. This magnificent late 18th century tureen is a product of the Josiah Wedgwood pottery and it comes from the Convolvulus service, one of the largest creamware services executed by Wedgwood. Wedgwood refined his clay bodies and achieved a whiter body than the previous creamware. It has a typical leaf moulded knob on the lid with a simple green enamelled decoration and some gilding. I'm not exactly certain of the origin of this setting, but it may be New Hall Creamware with an Irish artist, Adam Bucks, mother and child, vignettes in black transfer print with simple enamelled embellishment and a fine green line border. It is in lead glazed creamware. This setting is often called canary yellow and was popular during the last decades of the 18th and 19th century. The red transfer prints contrast brilliantly with the yellow antimony oxide glaze on earthenware. And again, the images are derived from the drawings of Irish portraitist and miniaturist Adam Buck. This setting came from a Newcastle upon Tyne pottery. Here is a large tureen by Thomas Wealdon from his pottery in Fenton Vivian, Stoke on Trent in Staffordshire, about 1760. The ware is described as tortoise shell. The different clouded effects were obtained by treating the lead glaze with different oxides of iron, manganese, and copper. Only that with brown mottling is properly called tortoise shell though the term is often used loosely to include multicoloured clouded ware in general. These handsome harvest jugs were made from as early as 1705 in North Devon and are described as slipware with graffito decoration. Harvest jugs are pitchers thought to have been used to carry ale, mead or cider to workers to quench their thirst after a long day in the field. They were made of unprocessed red clay straight from the ground and glazed in lead glazes from clear to brown in colour. The pot was first painted with white slip clay and the decoration was done by scratching and carving through the white slip to reveal the red clay beneath. This one was made by Robert Burnell of Cutcombe in about 1780. We see here another lovely example of slipware with graffito decoration, a large bowl which comes from Devonshire in the late 18th century. On the left is a small tin glazed sculpture of a dog. 
I'm not exactly sure of the purpose of the holes, but it is from the Lambeth Pottery about 1680. On the right is a source boat by Ralph Wood the Younger about 1770 in lead glazed earthenware. The following three pieces are wonderful examples of 18th century agate ware. Agate ware was introduced about 1730 by Dr. Thomas Wedgwood in Burslem, Staffordshire. This glazed earthenware agate mug was made in the style of John Astbury about 1750. And this is a lovely footed Wealden type agate ware source boat with the hound handle from about the same period. Agate ware is made by putting together layers of different coloured clays. They are then kneaded together for a short time till the desired agate effect is achieved as shown here when you cut through the clay. And the agate effect quickly becomes apparent if you are throwing your object on the pottery wheel. Here we have a French EQL. An EQL is a covered soup bowl with two handles from the Moulin factory in France. This agateware of beautifully wedged clay in several colours is known as brocatel ware after the brocatel marble which it attempted to imitate. During my career as a potter, I made quite a lot of agate ware, particularly for the old Sydney town consignment, such as that wall pocket and this uh, agate ware urn with the little schnauzer finial. Thomas Wealdon was a Staffordshire potter in the mid 1700s who made this type of ware in earthenware and he decorated his pieces with fluid motley glazing. And these two Chinese boys on water buffaloes are also examples of his work. Here we have a stirrup cup by Ralph Wood the Younger from Burslem in Staffordshire about 1780. It is lead glazed earthenware. Stirrup cups were made to hand to riders after the fox hunt to drink to the success of the hunt. And here it is, the right way up. And I conclude this video with this pair of delightful 18th century dog money boxes. They are tin glazed and decorated in a black pigment. They are about 21 centimetres high and were made at the Braunschweig pottery in Germany.